Fortunately, this week we have a hiatus of solo leveling, but any news got us some cut content from episode 7. Let's see what he has to say. Not only has Sung been leveling in terms of power and appearance, but his bank mm -hmm. account has seemed to level up quite a bit as yep. well. Bro is getting what? rich. Remember, one of those like E rank or D rank dungeons, right? Those crystal stones? According to him, it was like $80. But like the shit that we got in like the spider one, that, was, that an individual stone was like 7,500 USD. And there's like 10 of them. And Jin Ho gave us to it. And we have a trust fund kin as our fucking. He's not like our servant, but he pretty much wants to be, right? And we got all the fucking mana crystals, you know, the 1 billion won worth, right? Previously had only $300 in it, now had over 135,000. I mean, they did say being a hunter is like fast way to money, right? Obviously, you got to put your life on it, but imagine your bank account going from 300 to over six figures in the span of what? Like seven episodes. That's insane, dude. Just from one single raid. One this single raid. Like a lot since to us it really is, but in the grand total of what can be earned by a hunter, hundreds of insignificant probably, right? Millions are nothing but pennies to some. Yeah, like I remember, I, I would imagine like S rank or like future dungeons, like really important shit, right? Those hunters, after they clear one dungeon, they're probably making millions with just one raid. It's a natural part of the hunter economy. Sung's very much aware of, and one he intends to cash out on as soon as he gets there. As for how he plans to get there. Well, that's a bit of Jin content Ho. that should have been covered this episode. An interesting plan I'll talk about later, along with everything else the anime couldn't cover from both the manhwa and novel. Before I talk about that though... Raid Shadow Legends can coming? I want to ask if we can rate the episode down in the comments. Just a number out of 10 based on your... Ah, oh, he just wants the fucking engagement to go up. I'm, I'm gonna do... 69. <laughs> your opinion, and if you want, maybe... Like I'm not gonna lie, if some motherfucker wrote 69 and I'm Annie News and I have to read a bunch of fucking comments and I see that, I'd be like, what a fucking idiot, it's just wasting my time. I think that. I figured since I talk about each episode weekly, it would be cool to turn the comments into a kind of consensus board for Yeah? It. I'll explain why more at the end, but for now... Why? To boost the engagement so your video gets picked up more by the YouTube algorithm. One of the, like, comments actually is not top priority. Believe it or not, now there is no official documentation, but based on trends and patterns, the most important stats for a video to pop off on YouTube is watch time and impression click-through rate. If you don't know what those are, Google it. Beyond that, other forms of engagement are likes and comments and sharing. Those are not that important, but kind of big brain for him to kind of incentivize the users to immediately type something. Kind of like wow, how uh, you guys have noticed that I type the one same emoji and I respond to only people that type the same emoji, right? Think of what I'm doing. Now, if you want, just leave a number out of 10. Okay, episode 7. Let's see how far I can go. Covering chapters 25 to 27 from the manhwa and chapters 24 to 29 of the web novel. It was the night after Sung had fought Huang and the others, and his first order of business was to distribute all the points he'd earned from them. He kind of partied and just got a bunch of fried chicken and beer and just partied it up at home, right? <laughs> with 10 now at his disposal, it was the perfect amount to bring agility right up there with strength. But we should have put it into int. Now that I think about it, right? Now with the hindsight of using different, like, magic skills. I don't know, we have like, uh, I'm not even sure if willpower costs mana, but you saw how he's more reliant on mana later, right? The stat we know from past videos he was currently allocating all his focus into. He did set aside three of those ten for perception, but the plan right now was to even out agility with strength, after which he would then go to focus on vitality. So, with intelligence being the only stat getting ignored, the rest he was trying to raise evenly, leaving him a distribution looking... Did he just say he put stats into vitality, yet the intelligence and health are still stuck at 30? Didn't they all stay at the same level and they incrementally level up by one as he levels up by one? Maybe he misspoke there. I feel like he put into sense there after agility. King something like this. This wasn't all that Sung had earned that day though, since by becoming higher than level 20, he had unlocked his access to the item shop. An extent- What? Oh. What? Do we not have access to the item shop in, in the instance dungeon, the first one? In the, in the wolf dungeon? Sorry, not the wolf dungeon, against Kasaka, right? Didn't we? I'm not sure if we interacted with the shop, but I didn't realize that you'd have to fucking hit level 20 to actually unlock the shop to buy stuff. I, I swear to God, maybe it was a different UI I'm mistaking it with. Extensive list of goods all available to purchase. 
whether it be oh. a cheap potion or a 10 billion gold set of armor. Anything and everything was obtainable. You could only sell but not buy? Point. Okay. So from legendary daggers to impenetrable sets of armor, Sung had actual physical items that he could grind towards now. Unfortunately, he only had 112,000 gold himself, but the prospect of- How much is that currency conversion into USD or Korean won? What is this gold? Being able to earn more by farming instance dungeons was something he was even more excited for now. Combine this That's with a the fact totally that he separate just currency. wasn't broke anymore, and this whole endeavor was one he'd consider a worthwhile one. To specify on just how not broke Sung Jin Woo was anymore, well, before the raid, he only had $300 in his account, right. and it was after that that he found himself with $135,000. Yeah, we know that. He really wasn't kidding when he mentioned he'd be walking out with a mortgage payment. So, like, this was, uh... Okay, by the way, who the fuck is gonna be able to... What kind of mortgage are you buying where you only need $135,000 in this current age and era? In any fucking developing nation, right? In developed nation. Like, what do you mean? Where, where are you going to fucking buy a house with 135k, bro? That's not even going to make the fucking down payment, dude. That's not even fucking 5% down payment, dude. You're going to be buying a fucking check anyways. Apparently, this is like, uh, what's it called? His perspective here, like this webtoon picture of Sung Jae Moo looking evil as he, you know, carves up the mana stones. Apparently, this is just from Jin Ho's perspective. So it's not like canon. It's just Jin Ho thinking Sung Jae Moo's kind of scary right now. As for how he accrued so much money, well, the entire thing had come from essence. Each one of these is 7,500 according to any news. If he changes the number, then he's fucking backtracking. Cores. The Say 49 it. C rank cores he'd earned from the gate altogether sold for a total of 225,000. Whoa, 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 what did they say? We had, we had 49 cores, right? Hold up, hold up, hold up. We're gonna do a little, we're gonna do a little math here, okay? He really wasn't kidding when he mentioned he- Calculator is out. Mortgage payment. Okay, okay. As for how he accrued so 49 of it, right? The entire thing had come from Essence cores. Gotcha. 49 of it? The 49 of it? The 49 of it? Yeah. 225 divided by- Right? 225, 100,000 divided by 49 equals 4. Point, like, it's pretty much $4,600 USD. Now, he said that this shit was 7,500 each last episode. Bro is fucking trolling me. Bro is fucking trolling me, dude. Where are these numbers? Where is he getting these numbers from? From the novel, right? It was a sum that would have been split 10 ways had Huang not betrayed him, but was instead all left to Sung as decided by Yeah. Jin selling them wasn't even that difficult since in an economy where essence tax oh my god could you imagine if it's a fucking tax system you get fucking tax on this bullshit so like we could have made 7500 usd each but because of some fucking gate tax right you got to pay up to the guild right roughly like like uh, 3000 goes to the guild so that's an insane cut not as bad as niji sanji though i hear the talents only get like two percent since cores are more coveted than first edition charizards any cores up in the market were sold pretty much immediately. The only decision Sung had a tough time making was where and how he would choose to sell them. It could be in person or through a business or even to a guild or some online marketplace. Can you not sell it in your own shops? Rather than use any of those though, Sung decided it would be best to go through an intermediary. It was the best option considering the amount he was selling. Granted, he would be subject to a 40% personal sales tax. Oh my tax, god, sales tax! Of the course when not selling through a guild. Oh, uh, so, so if you sell through a guild, then you're going to get a better cut. But if you sell individually, there's a fat sales tax. That's where he's getting the $4,500, $4,600 figure from. Because it used to be like $7,500, he said, just flat out. But the actual revenue, sorry, profit, right? If the revenue is 7500 per stone and you sell it as a 40% roughly tax, I think the math might actually work out to 4600 roughly. For those who did, they were given a tax rate of 10%. So basically, guilds just get away with, you know, lower tax cuts to incentivize creating guilds. It makes sense. And by the way, if there was like a church type of guild, I bet they get like tax exempt status free. Did you know that churches, they're ghetto, they like all the income they make, they never have, well, they do have to report it. But they never like get taxed on it because they're like holy and they're religious. And God said that mm -mm -mm, there ain't no way my children are going to pay for income tax. <laughs> if they're a believer, only the fucking church people, basically the pastor and everybody. It's, it's pretty corrupt, man. A massive discount compared to what the non-guild hunters had to deal with. So rather than the 135,000. I see. So this is where we need to join Jinho's guild. 
because of cuts like this. I never realized that packs would come in so clutch right now, but this is a huge incentive to join Jinho's guild. Not only to bet for different gates, right? Having that. Not only that he can clear all the gates by himself, right? He can lay low and he gets like a better tax cut. This makes all sense now. Thousand dollars Sung was left with on his end. Had he sold through a guild, he would have been left with 200,000 instead. A whopping 70,000 extra just for being part of an organization rather than- We gotta individual. join a guild, man. Now, that may sound like how major corporations get tax breaks in the real world, but unlike them and their constant abuse of loopholes, guilds get a break because of what they have to deal with. You see, unlike a death? private party who can pick and choose which gates they want to challenge, guilds can't say no when they're ordered to mobilize. Oh. Whenever the association or government calls upon them to act, regardless of status or number of people, those capable have to respond and go immediately. That is... <sighs> I mean, I'm not trying to be a hero or anything, but goddamn, you just have to follow the orders like that if you're part of a top tier guild like this. That kind of sucks, but I mean, it's your job, right? It's kind of like being on call for work permanently. Ugh. It's also the reason we saw the White Tiger Guild respond so quickly to the double dungeon incident. They were the did, ones called to it. Did they respond quickly? Then again, they were like one episode behind. It's not like they just found out about it now. Investigate it. So, with that and the general danger of being a hunter being part of the daily guild member life, it was only natural several benefits Ooh, and leniencies be allowed to them. Perks that would remain so long as they followed the orders of the government and association. This then made Sung think whether those perks were worth joining a guild for, but a few seconds of thought was all he needed to convince himself otherwise. When considering the money he could make when he was stronger, this 70,000 was really just pennies. It was a measly amount, definitely not worth exposing himself. Bro needs to buy a new fucking jacket, dude. He's been wearing the same blue jacket for like a couple, three episodes now. Over. This was a topic the manhwa and novel kept coming back to since there was quite a lot of effort. Be Is this the same one in the webtoon? I mean, it's not the same color, but it could be like roughly the same shape. Being put towards keeping Always his wears secret. hood. <laughs> That's not to say he wasn't on the association's radar, but after having already disproven the possibility of reawakening, the notion of him being involved in any of this was quickly disregarded. Since the core they'd used to test him was a superior A rank one, it was near impossible for it to give a wrong reading. Thus, the reason they didn't suspect Sung, despite giant. Wait, what did you say? What did you say? Whoa, whoa, whoa I, I zoned out there. Wait, what? Regarded. Since the core they'd used to test him was a superior A rank one, okay. it was near impossible for it to give a wrong reading. Okay. Thus, the reason they didn't. The power level 10 should not be wrong. Suspect Sung, despite giant arachnids being a boss not considered very threatening. At least not to hunters who were at Huang's level. But this now there weren't hunters at Huang's level. It was just D class. Sorry, sorry, that's class in the elite. Um, e, e rank uh, Sung Jin Mu and what is he? C, D rank like uh, Jin Ho with the armor. I know that it's not that big of a deal, for, but for them to just like just casually say, oh, you two took out the boss. Oh, not a big deal. Bye. Like, are you serious? Like, like. Everyone else is gone. They're apparently dead. Well, you could say like they might have died in a dungeon, right? I guess the argument that we could have used is Huang Dong Sokun has partied at all the work and they, they just barely died and we got the kill steal. I'm not sure, but they they definitely don't do their due diligence. That brings us to Sung's celebration of his newfound wealth and the only difference from here was his choice to ingest Kazuka's venom. Unlike how he did so during his fight with Cerberus, after finding out he was immune to harmful substances, Sung instead decided to test the venom right here in his bedroom. See, I think the anime did a good job. Because if he did it in the webtoon like this, right, and the novel, then I feel like we wouldn't have that moment in the anime, the realization when we're like almost at a death door. It's like, holy shit, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, yeah. Remember about the poison? Remember the beer stuff? It's like, holy shit, it makes sense there, right? So I feel like the anime's decision to make it at that point to consume Kasuka's venom was way better than like casually like drinking it here. Like if you drank it here, it'd be like, oh, cool. All right, whatever, right? But apparently in the anime also, like the battle was so much harder, right? In the webtoon, I hear like Sung Jin would kind of just casually just toss the Cerberus around, but well, maybe not tossed it around, but didn't struggle as much in the anime. Now, we already know this grants him a permanent 20% physical damage reduction buff, but to expand on the blessing which negated the other half of it, he basically has a constant passive which makes him immune to diseases, poisons, and abnormalities. So, this is like, immune to all diseases, forever? Like, for the rest of his life, 
not just like random debuffs from the gates, like from the hunter, uh, sorry, from the monsters within the gates, but like any type of like illnesses. He can never get cancer. He'll never get dementia. Just anything like normies like us have to suffer. He'll never get that. Then should he be weakened when going to bed? The rate at which he healed would be exponentially increased while sleeping. Oh. These were the two factors which applied after Sh finishing the current the region. The quest. One other detail that needs to be pointed out here is Jinnah's realization that Sung had changed a bit. Mm. Ever since he'd started working out, to her something seemed a little bit different about him. Yeah, like him growing a fucking entire foot? How about the fact that his entire facial symmetry changed, huh? She couldn't quite pinpoint what it was about his personality, but she was definitely taking notice of how tense he was Physique? all the time. The, the personality is what you're focused on? How about the fucking physique, dude? He's a completely different person, bro. You should be asking, where's my brother? He certainly wasn't the easygoing brother she knew from just a week ago. It's after this that we get to the scene with Jinho, and in addition to getting more information behind what he's planning, there were a few interesting scenes that were cut probably for the best. What do you mean? The first was one of the edgier things that I've read in a while, while the what? other was something that I think that they're what? saving for later. Sung Jin Woo did something so, edgy? To start with the former. Bro, what the fuck is this again? Like, Cafe Penne? Cafe Penne? You might as well call this Cafe Penis. Cafe Cock. Cafe Dick. What is it going on? Cafe Meat, bro. Before Sung had even sat down to talk, a group of students would be in the cafe being very disruptive right next to him. Uh -huh. Like, loud enough that no one around could hear anyone else. Basically a bunch of shitty students being loud and obnoxious to everybody, okay? Talking to them. Naturally, Sung would get up and politely ask them oh, to stop. Oh, politely? After being mocked sarcastically and even have a napkin thrown at him, he would escalate this. They threw a napkin at him when he told these kids to shut the fuck up? Uh, like, politely. Situation in a way that does literally the exact opposite of keeping attention away from him. He would grab a spoon from a nearby table, ask mm -hmm. the waitress how much it cost, pay for it right there in front of everyone, then wow. crush that spoon with his bare hands while <laughs> That is so cringe. <laughs> that is actually so cringe. So like after the kids told him to fuck off Boomer, he's like, hmm, waitress, how much is this spoon? Uh, $10, sir. Okay, here's 20, take the tip. Keep the tip, sorry. And then he crushes it. And then the kids are like, oh my god, he's so strong. We should have fucked around. And they ran out of the cafe. Is that what happened? Everyone was watching. He had turned it into a neat little ball, which he would okay. drop right in front of the students. Wow. Of course, this was with... Honestly, if this happened in Eminence and Shadow, I'd probably be dying laughing. Honestly, this is like straight out of Eminence and Shadow. Sid Kagano would 100% think about doing something chuny like that. The intent of showing them he was a hunter, but out of all the ways that he could have done so, this was definitely one of them. It was a funny and cringy scene from the novel that was definitely interesting. Should have put it in the anime. The conversation now, though. It's also interesting to see how both sides perceive the other when going into it. Jinho sees a false ranker who kills for fun, while Sung sees a spoiled rich kid who treats dungeons like a playground. Trust fun both kid! Both are widely inaccurate, yet for some reason both are still willing to hear the other out. For Jinho, it's because while yes, Sung did kill those men, he had also saved his life not once but twice. He had showed on both occasions that he wasn't just this cold-blooded killing machine. No. Instead, to him, he was a patron of effort. A noble hunter who embodied absolute fairness and... And I think the work ethic part, like, really motivates him, too, because he's trying to do his own shit in his own family, right? Like, kind of competing against his, like, older brother to get the whole guild set up. As such would never take that which he didn't earn. For Sung, his opinion was rooted more in experience, since in the world of Hunters, those who raided did so for two reasons. Money and bitches. It was either for money or a noble sense of duty. Eh, I was almost there. Since Jinho didn't fit into either of these categories, Sung assumed he was fighting just to experience it. To him, he was a rich kid who got bored of his safe and sheltered life and was now raiding in order to break free from that. Well, is he? I mean, he probably is a safe and sheltered kid. He might be bored, but I feel like he has a lot to prove and he's not like a selfish asshole that like steps over people and thinks of other people like less fortunate than him to be like a lesser human right he's not that like the typical like rich kid right now in, in the screen right this is how like sung jin would kind of like imagine jin ho to be like the most stereotypical trust fund kid but he's not the thing that had kept sung listening was the determination in jin ho's eyes which made it seem it wasn't that there was something about his look and tone that just made sung curious the eyes never up. lie it was once Jin Ho had mentioned the Guildmaster stuff that that's when Sung was able to start piecing everything together. 
he quickly realized it was all to further the reach of Jinho's father's construction company. Already it was deeply rooted in many different areas of business, but only recently had it started dabbling in hunter stuff, and this was a field that was quickly proving itself to be very profitable. The thing about taking part in the hunter business though was that in order to really start making money in it, the supervision of a guild was absolutely necessary. Like, say you wanted to obtain cores, corpses, or crystals ranking at the B rank or higher, the only way you could do so was through a guild. Specifically one of the larger Unless ones. you have your own guild. So, with guilds being this middleman taking a cut of the pie, Jinho's father wanted to remove that. He wanted to start his own guild so he yes. could deal with higher ranking loot directly. It was after all where all the money was at. We just saw how much Sung made from one It just makes so much sense why Sung Jin Woo is going to join this, right? Like, we already talked about the tax cuts that we didn't even know about in the anime. We now know that, like, guilds have complete oversights over who gets to go to these high rank ones. If we have our own guild, we don't need the middleman. And we don't, have a, we don't need a whole party, right? Sung Jin Woo will surely just solo clear everything because this is solo leveling. So that means we're going to get all the solo loot as well single C rank gates, so I'm sure you can imagine the billions that could be made from higher ranked ones. I mean, it was enough for Jinho to just give away a 30 billion dollar building like it was nothing, so that alone should be indicative of how much money could be made from it. The core problem as we saw in the anime though was the potential conflict which could stem from the guildmaster and deputy guildmaster. Hmm? Since the guildmaster's authority was- Even if your brother becomes a second in command, the guildmaster has much more authority. So like friction between the two brothers, huh? Absolute. If hmm. there was ever a dispute between Jinho's brother and the S-rank hunter- we gonna meet this guy? That S-rank hunter could take down everything. They alone had the authority to do anything with the guild. If the guildmaster was someone who would never betray the company though, this whole thing wouldn't be a problem to begin with. Thus the reason why Jinho wanted to make himself guildmaster. The thing is, when compared to his older brother who had numerous achievements in business already, the only thing he, a 22 year old college student had was he was 23. As a hunter. Unless he did something spectacular to prove himself, there was no way his father would ever accept the proposal of him becoming a guildmaster. And if you can't do something, and if you have money, just hire someone to do it for you. In comes Sung Joo Moo, clear 20 C rank dungeons, easy. To them it was much safer risking a dual leadership with the older brother and an S rank hunter. So, this brings us to Sung Jin Woo, who out of all the hunters in the entire world is the only one suited to helping Jin Ho here. Reason being that if Jin Ho just went and paid stronger hunters to help him, to his father that would be no different from him just buying the guildmaster license himself. Okay. If he How raided does... with hunters who were on paper weaker than him though, then that alone might just be enough to prove himself. So it's, it's just all bullshit at the end of the day. I mean, Sung Jin Woo is not weaker. Like, 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 the fact that us hiring higher rank hunters to help us get this quota out of the 20 clears makes us look bad because we're buying our way out. And suddenly, because now, Sung Jin Woo on paper, he's E rank, so it doesn't look as bad. That's kind of bullshit, right? It's all aesthetics at the end of the day. None of this is comes from like a principled stance. It's just like, oh, well, if I just, you know, smurf these dungeons with Sung Jin Woo, then suddenly dad's going to think that I'm pretty legit. Perhaps it would show the commitment and leadership Jin Ho's father wanted in a guild master. Well, we're just this lying then. This was really the only thing Jin Ho needed, since once that position was earned, the rest would be simple. He would poach an S rank and make them deputy guild master, then after that the others were sure to follow. Surely. Just so long as one of the leaders were strong, that would be good enough to attract others. Surely that will happen, making this right? Making a plan that essentially built upon itself. The first step of which was the 20 raid completion requirement. This now brings us to Jin Ho's offer, which was the entire 30 billion won building so 30 billion won is about 22.5 million USD. Damn. The headquarters was going to operate out of. A massive sum for sure when compared to anything Sung's experienced before, but what the anime didn't mention was that this was just the starting point. Sure, the base value of the building is 30 billion now, but once the building was made and the guild operating out of it, that 30 billion would grow significantly due to the simple fact that hunters were present. Okay. Since dungeon breaks were always a possibility, the closer a guild was, the safer everyone felt. And what was more valuable than a person's safety? So, even though 30 billion was what was offered now, in actuality Sung was looking at a whole lot more. It was at minimum the equivalent of winning 20 lotteries straight. A straight this straight is basically what's called opportunity cost, the intangible potential that you don't really know, but you put time into it and it's like, hmm, 
You never know what that time could have yielded. Transfer that would occur once the guild had been operating for a year out of it. The only thing it would cost for Sung Jinu was the simple completion of 19 C rank raids. Now, this was. I don't get why it got dropped from 20 to 19. I feel like Jinho said 20 in the beginning and he made it 19 to make it a little bit more attractive value so it's less clears. But, like, what? Just the difference of one would make him. I don't know. What's, what's the difference between 20 and 19 clears? It's certainly a tempting offer, but when considering the full extent of what he could really make, even this was nothing when compared to the potential hundreds of billions. If he got to the S rank, then just the contract fees alone would be around how much the He did one was. by himself? I mean... Oh, the one that we cleared counts as one. I thought we had to do a fresh start with just Sung Jin Mu and Jin Ho. I thought that, you know, we were lying to the people saying Hwang Dong Suk helped us clear the fucking boss. And that's why they died and we, and we don't look as suspicious, but whatever. This was, after all, a world where the number of S ranks dictated how powerful a country was. It almost sounds like no other hunters matter. Like... I feel like the ex existence of S ranks is gonna make the power scaling very weird in the future because it's like, why do we need fucking, you know, E, D, C, B, A ranks? Maybe A ranks will be somewhat relevant, but like, because the an S rank exists, and it sounds like, like everyone else is just like fucking around. You're basically bringing like a knife to like a gun fight, right? Like, these people are so weak and insignificant when compared to S ranks. So, we need to meet more of these S ranks, man. Ranks dictated how powerful a country was. So, knowing just how valuable he could become, the most important thing to Sung right now was progress. It didn't matter how much money any single person could offer, since no regular human's wealth could come even close to that of an S ranks. That being the case. How rich is Cha Hei Yin? She's gotta be super rich. The only thing that did matter now was getting there. Thank you for to the him, bits, my man! He just needed to grow his powers, and to do that, he knew he needed to be alone. Joining a guild meant sharing XP, and raiding with others meant limiting his power. It also restricted when and where he could be all the time, That's and right. that freedom simply wasn't something he was willing to give up right now. It just makes so much sense that we should go in and be just a solo person clearing everything in the shadows and just like looting everything and growing stronger like this guild proposition from Jinho is like the best thing that could have ever happened to Sung Jin Mu right now what he needs is to get a shitload of EXP and grind the 20 clears the 19 clears will do exactly that by himself and he gets a shitload of money there's like no reason not to do it you know what I mean like what is the reason why you wouldn't want to do this now that is unless a certain condition was met this was something I'm sure we'll see in the next episode, but the details behind it lead to- Oh wait, I think Otaku Spirit talked about this. What was the conditions? That he needs to do it himself or something? I feel like it was something to do by yourself. I forget the condition though, fuck. To a completely different outcome from what we saw in the anime. It's a what decision it? that's probably spoiler from one of the next episodes, but- it, Wasn't it that he wants to clear by himself? Or something? At the same time, is technically cut content since it's made at the end know. of this meeting here. I'll just briefly summarize the details for those. Oh, oh here we go. Know, but for those I don't think it's that bad of spoilers. We already listened to it. So skip ahead if you don't want spoilers. So don't, feel free to skip ahead to this timestamp. So, the condition Sung came up with was that him and Jin Ho would be the only two to- That's right, them. right, 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 right. It was like, only us go and I get all the EXP and I'm not sure if Jin Ho gets anything, but obviously this is all for his own gain. Just like how Huang paid randoms to fill his party, Sung would do the same except pay eight hunters not to do the raid. He would complete the gate all by himself and in turn get all the experience and money that came with it. Jin Ho would get the 20 raids he so desired, and Sung would get the opportunities he yeah, definitely Yeah, everyone wins. For. What made this plan so incredibly effective, though, was that not only did it help Sung in pretty much every way possible, but it also made Jin Ho look damn near perfect. Since Sung was the only one at risk in all this, should he complete all 20 raids without issue whatsoever, then Jin Ho would be the leader who ran 19 raids without a single casualty. That does look fucking insane, It was huh? a clear display of his capacity to lead that Sung 19 raids without casualty because technically the first one, which should be adding up to 20, right? The spider raid. <laughs> Huang Dong Suk and them die, but those weren't, you know, those were intentional casualties. Sung was sure could win his father over, or at the very least make Jin Ho think it could. This was exactly what had happened since as soon as that point was made, Jin Ho was in agreement, resulting in a joint venture in which Sung would get his money and experience, and Jin Ho would get a clear path towards becoming Guildmaster. 
Once again, I'm sure this will come up in a later episode, but I'm curious to see how they'll do it since it'll require a completely new scene. Fast forward to Sung's completion of the hidden quest and the rewards the he got box. were actually quite Now, did we actually have like an option here, like between blessed and cursed? An option as in like, would each of them yield different results? Because it sounds like listening to other people's reviews, the system is wanting Sung Jun Mu to be incentivized to get stronger because it just favors the system if their own player becomes stronger, right? Everything so far has been very nicely scaled in terms of difficulty. Sung Jin Mu obviously has been pushed to the limits, but it wasn't too impossible. And now even the blessed random loot box giving him a fucking key to the demon place where it's like it gives you the recipe and the potion, the elixir that can heal his mom, right? So it's like everything that we're getting feels a little bit too convenient towards incentivizing Sung Jin Mu to become stronger. So it sounds like maybe the cursed random loot box would have done the same shit too. I don't know. It's just my headcanon. I don't know. Quite interesting plus 10 stats was instead actually all stats plus 3, and the random boxes he got oh. had important descriptors to them. Okay. Apparently, the blessed would provide Sung with what he Okay, it provides what the player wants. So this is like... Why didn't other people that fucking, you know... Wasn't, wasn't there people's videos that we saw that like talked about how they read shit in the novel? They, they didn't know this detail? What the fuck? It would have answered their own questions, but... Basically, random blessed loot box gives people what they want. So he wants his mom to be cured. Makes sense it would do that. He wanted, whereas the cursed said that it would give Sung what he needed. Huh. Want versus need. What does Sung Jin Woo need right now? He needs, like, power. All the levels. All the money. Right? I, I don't know. What, what if he got in here? I'm really interested now. Since he wasn't sure whether this would turn out to be a monkey paw huh. incident, though, Sung knew he should probably play it safe. Yeah, I would have gambled. I would have gambled. Because something he wanted was definitely something he needed, whereas something he needed might not necessarily be something he wanted. True. Say he felt he needed a powerful weapon, then it's possible the box would spawn a bomb and blow up everything. I mean, it did give him, right? I need a powerful weapon. Oh yeah? Here's a fucking bomb that's going to detonate in your face, right? It didn't say that the powerful weapon's going to be helpful to you, right? So it's like some bullshit like that. That was the type of thing Sung was thinking about when considering the cursed box. Luckily, this key was exactly what he needed, so there wasn't much regret in not choosing the cursed box. Now, an important detail about the key is the distinct wording used to differentiate it from the other key. Huh? Unlike how the previous stated that he would be moved into a dungeon, this one here said that he would simply enter one. Did the instance dungeon in the beginning not say that? It didn't? The the one to the subway station? It was a peculiar change that made him think perhaps he could move in and out of the dungeon. Ah, because like I talked about this possibility of, okay, we went in and like, let's say we saw the Cerberus and we're like, okay, this is fucking stupid. We should not be here. We should get the fuck out, right? And let's say imagine he used the key to get in and he goes out. Then like the portal's gone. The key's gone. You used your one time entrance. It's over. That's basically what the first instance dungeon was, right? But the wording here has changed, so it implies that you can go in and out whenever you want. This would actually be the first thing Sung would test upon entering it, and it would prove to be true as no invisible wall prevented him from leaving. He was free to enter and exit as many times as he wanted. So it's not even like a... I mean, it is an instance dungeon type, but it feels like, you know, a new map. You know, a new region has been explored, and you can go there whenever you want. Wanted. Something the manhwa did that neither the anime nor novel did was provide justification for why Sung wanted to enter the dungeon so bad. I mean, he knew he stood no chance in a dungeon that was like the S rank, and he knew the smart thing to do would have been to level up some more, then enter it. But Yet, despite knowing that this gate was exponentially harder than the C, B, or even A rank ones, he still wanted to enter for one single reason only. What? He felt the need Where's to mom? know exactly how strong he was. Call oh. him greedy or call him... It was just an ego check. He just wanted to see, all right, I'm feeling pretty strong recently. Can I do this? He just, he's just that crazy, dude. Stupid, but to Sung who knew what awaited him in the future, <laughs> okay. this right here was a necessary part of determining his true capability. Well, I mean, when you find an enemy in like this S rank like dungeon and the boss, it's not even a boss, it's a fucking tutorial. Again, this thing is like the equivalent of those goblins or the red wolf lichen thing in the instance dungeon. And you see a red name plate above it. It's like, should you do an ego check here? I mean, I guess it's like personality and everything is changing as he's growing stronger, right? 
Part of the reason he knew this was impossible now, though, was because if this was in fact an S-rank dungeon like how the key's rarity indicated, then even a full team of S-ranks would only have a 50% chance of completing it. Even a full party of S-ranks, 50-50 to clear it. Sorry, that's survival rates. He likened it to the S-rank dungeon break of Jeju Island, which to this day remains uninhabitable since no amount of hunters has been able to clear it yet. I'm not sure if I should have heard that part, but it's too late. So the Jeju Island ant shit that we saw in the first episode, that was a dungeon break. I mean, it makes sense. The, the ants are fucking out, right? It, it, of course it makes sense. The ants are already out. Of Duh. Damn, okay, okay. But like, this is like going to be hype for later, right? And like, this is like apparently the past and like, no, not like the present of episode one timeline. So, if one were to open up in Korea right now, then every hunter in the country would still only have a near zero chance of beating it. The monsters within were just that terrifying. Their defenses were near impenetrable, and their attacks were strong enough to insta-kill. So, why would Sung put himself at risk facing monsters like that? Well, he needed to know if he was strong enough to fight said monsters. <laughs> I mean, if you die, then it's fucking pointless, right? But alright, go on. Would his current level of power be enough to even damage them? The immediate answer to that was no, but after a more prolonged fight that the anime did the best out of all the mediums, mm. Sung was able to prove otherwise and defeat the Cerberus. Both the Manwa and novel had a much shorter fight, so I actually prefer the anime since they really highlighted Sung's struggle with it. Yes, and I think that the decision to save the uh, Kasaka Venom in this fight, right, instead of drinking it earlier, just like how it happened in the Webtoon or the novel, way better direction. The novel was the usual confidence Sung with minimal hassle, while the Manwa had him snapping necks and chopping out eyeballs. Both took advantage of the status refresh, but they never really had him on edge like the way that the anime did. It was a nice change since this was, after all, an S-rank monster. An opponent, I think, if he defeated with ease, would display a scaling of power that would be a bit too fast even. Yeah, if he beat this thing too quick, I think a lot of people would actually be like, what the fuck? Holy shit, we're like seven episodes in, but he can already like, take these things like S-rank dungeon threats out that easily? It's like, what? For my liking. It certainly wouldn't have shown that his current state was too weak to face off against- Like, if you're gonna do something like that, already make him this fucking broken to the point where he can take out the Cerberus thing in an instant, there needs to be some kind of comedic aspect to it. Because if not, then suddenly... Like, like if this is Eminence and Shadow, and Shadow just beat it quickly, it'd be funny, right? It'd be like, ha ha ha, whatever, we expected that. But like, this is a different type of power scaling show, right? It's a different type of power fantasy show. So you gotta make the slow burn progression worthwhile and make sense, because there's no like comedic element to him just defeating it in one blow. It's not that kind of show. ...against the rest of the dungeon. That's the message that was made loud and clear here, and it's that which brings us to the end of the episode now. So, that's everything we missed from episode 7, and knowing all that, my personal rating for it would be 7.5 out of 10. Ooh. It was a good episode with lots of action, but I... Not my favorite episode either, but the fight was pretty high. I'd rank it somewhere between 7 and 8, yeah. I don't think it's like a 9. Maybe it could be as high as 8.5. I think they could have done more to highlight Sung's desire to know how strong he was. It was, after all, the primary justification for choosing to put everything at risk like this. Now, as I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. I'd love to know what you personally would rate the episode to. You know, a simple- Another call to action to boost his engagement because bro is a YouTube god. Anyways, guys, you know what to do. Please give Mr. Any News a sub to his channel if you haven't liked his videos. If you did, he always gives us such great information that's been cut from the anime by combining the knowledge from the webtoon and the novel. And that's it for me. See you next week when we actually have an episode.